The art of communication between two parties comes down to common understanding. This could be through spoken word, written word, body language, sign language, the list goes on. In rallying, communication between the driver and co-driver is paramount to achieving good stage times and keeping your car on the road. Because everything is happening at such high speed and the driver clearly has their hands full at all times during a stage, it can be very difficult to take in the information delivered in a normal manner. Because of this, co-drivers develop their own way of relaying crucial information to the driver, effectively creating a whole new language which both members must be fluent in. Sammy, you will wreck the car! We will not finish! Today, I'm going to teach you the basic language of the co-driver and help you understand as much as possible about pace notes. This generalised system is used in most of the current popular rally games such as Dirt Rally 2.0 and WRC 10, as well as many of the classics including Colin McRae Rally and Richard Burns Rally. In real rallying, these ideas will be developed further and adapted to suit a particular driver's preferences, but this basic platform remains relevant for most. So, if you've been struggling to understand your co-driver whilst playing your favourite rally game, fear not, we are here to help. And once you crack this, I can guarantee you that your results and enjoyment will improve significantly. Let's break this down section by section, starting with the basics. The most common pace note format you will hear multiple times throughout each stage will be a left or right combined with a number between 1 and 6. In WRC 10, the direction comes first, so for example, left 5 or right 3. Left 6 short into left 5 short, cut. Whilst in Dirt Rally 2.0, it's delivered in the opposite order, so 5 left or 3 right. 4 right and 5 left. These instructions quite simply tell you which direction the corner that's being described is going and how tight or open that corner is. 1 means that the corner is really tight and will need to be taken in a low gear at slow speed. 2 signifies a slightly more open corner, but would normally still be described as tight and slow speed. 3 and 4 are generally medium speed corners, 3 being slightly on the tighter side and 4 being a bit more open again. 5 means a fast corner and 6 is a very fast and open corner, often flat out or at least very close to being. The best way to get used to this numbering system and remember how it works is to associate a number with the gear you're in. One signifies super tight corners, so we'll often need first or second gear. Medium speed corners can often be taken in third or fourth gear, whilst fast open corners such as fives and sixes will often require those gears to be used as well. This is never an exact science, as gear selection depends on so many variables from the cars to the setup to the conditions, but it's a good benchmark to help you get used to the system. Now, before I move on, I want to cover something fundamental for anyone out there who is already confused. My co-driver is saying left four, but the corner I'm heading into is a right-hander. Why is that? This is because the co-driver is telling you the upcoming corners in advance, so that you can prepare sufficiently. It's likely in this example that the left four will be coming up soon, and the right-hander you're currently heading into was described a few seconds before. As I said at the beginning, these simple instructions, a number and a direction, will form the backbone for most of your pace notes, but not every corner is described by a number. If the co-driver uses the word hairpin, this means a very tight corner, slower than a 1 and often close to 180 degrees. The tightest hairpins may require the use of the handbrake to get round in one go, and these will be described as an acute hairpin on WRC 10, or a tight hairpin on Dirt Rally. Another common term is a square left or square right. Square is referring to the angle of the corner, and means it is a 90 degree angle. In terms of speed, this will often be similar to a 1 or 2, but that extra little bit of detail always helps. Finally, if the co-driver says flat left or flat right, it means you can take the corner without lifting off the throttle or using the brake. Flat out. So then, if a 6 left or right is normally flat out anyway, why do we need another different pace note to describe the same thing? This is because for each corner you will be travelling at a different speed on entry. Think of it this way, if you're only doing 10 miles per hour on corner entry, even a 2 right or a 3 left might be flat out. On the other hand, if you're carrying 150 miles an hour into a 6 left, then chances are you will still have to break. I'm pointing this out because it's something people often overlook. Just because two different corners are described identically in terms of how tight they are, doesn't mean that they have to be driven in the same manner. So, how do we combat this? Give the driver more information, of course. The more info you have, the more you can tailor your driving to suit each individual corner. Let's run through those extra details you will learn to pick up on. First off, if you hear a bigger number such as 30, 50 or even 150, this is referring to the distance in metres of a straight you are about to come onto. Normally you will hear this number immediately after a corner is described. So for example, square right 100 means that after the square right, there is a 100 metre straight before the next corner. If the straight is very short or non-existent, instead of saying a number, they might say the words AND or INTO. 3 right into 4 left means the first corner will instantly flow into the second corner, with no break in between. So what about the length of the corners? Instead of using numbers, the co-driver will use a simple description, such as short, medium, long, or even very long. Quite simply, this tells you how long a corner will go on for, and you should try to adjust your speed in line accordingly. 
Another thing a co-driver may describe to you is how a corner develops. Rally stages are often originally built for road use, so these corners aren't artificially designed. What this means is that the tightness of a corner might not stay the same throughout, it may open up or even get tighter as you reach the apex. Circuit racing fans, think Turn 1 at Shanghai, or Brooklands at Silverstone. Your co-driver will warn you of this with descriptions such as tightens, narrows, opens, or widens. For example, right 4 tightens means the corner starts out as a 4, but may tighten to a 3 or even a 2. In fact, sometimes they actually give you the number it changes to. 5 left tightens to 3, for example. Widens and narrows are exactly as described, so be careful when the road narrows on corner exit and take advantage of the extra space when it widens. To cut or not to cut? That is the question. And your co-driver often has the answer. If they tell you don't cut when describing a corner, don't cut. They are warning you that there is potential danger to be found, whether that's a hidden rock on the inside of the corner, or just a nasty bump that might launch your car into a series of barrel rolls. On the other hand, if they tell you to cut, they are telling you this because it's safe to do so and you can gain some time doing it. You may have grown up always trying to be on time, but sometimes it's actually beneficial to be early, or even late. If a co-driver uses this terminology, they are referring to when they think you should turn in for the corner. Late means you are better off turning in later than you might think, and aim for a late apex. Early means the opposite. Maybe the corner has horrible negative camber towards the outside on corner entry and it's best to get the car in for an early apex. Actually, on the subject of camber, the co-driver may also warn you of this specifically. If they say left 3 bad camber, you can expect the corner to lean away from the apex, so you might need to adjust your speed and line accordingly. The next thing I'm going to cover is blatant warnings. Your co-driver might use the word caution before a corner. Downhill, triple caution! Triple caution! This suggests that the corner is a tricky or dangerous one, so expect the unexpected when you arrive. In this situation, it's always best to err on the side of caution and take it a bit easier. Hopefully you will spot the reason for the warning and maybe even remember it next time you tackle the same stage. Sometimes the co-driver literally uses the word slow, and as you might expect, just do what they say. There will be a reason for it. Another common warning you will hear is unseen. This simply means that the corner is blind and you won't see it right until the last moment. Just pay extra attention when approaching these sections so that you don't miss the corner and fly off the road. What would you do without your co-driver? Now the fun bit. Many co-drivers will wince at the thought of a big jump, but thankfully when these co-drivers are virtual, there are no chances of being winded or fracturing a vertebrae. This means when you are being told about jumps, crests or big crests, you can absolutely go for it. Just be careful to think about the landing and what might be coming next. Another warning may be the co-driver telling you to keep right, left or in the middle heading into a jump. I don't need to explain this one, just do as they say. It will likely be to try and make sure you land properly and on the correct line, as jumps aren't always straight. Into right four and crest, keep middle 30. Your passenger may also warn you about bumps, and in some ways these can be more dangerous than the jumps themselves. Bumps have the ability to throw your car offline when you least expect it, so as usual, be wary. The final type of pace note you can expect to hear is a literal description of upcoming features. These could be water splashes, tunnels, bridges, gates, walls, logs, snow, ice, etc etc. These may be important for a number of reasons. Walls, bridges and logs could be stage ending if you hit them, whilst tunnels may require lights, water splashes may require wipers, and snow or ice may require caution- OH SH- Pay attention, assess the risk and adjust your commitment accordingly. And that's your lot. Pace notes? Completed it, mate. Just before I conclude things, I do want to cover a few more general points that will help you optimise your rally gaming co-driver experience. First of all, remember that most titles have a wide variety of languages to choose from. So if English isn't your first language for example, check to see if there's a better option out there for you. The most recent major rally title, WRC10, includes French, German, Spanish, Italian and Japanese options as well as English, with both female and male variations. I can't guarantee this guide will apply in the same way to other languages, but it's unlikely to be massively different. Another tip, and this one is very important, is to change the pace note call distance. Set this as early as you're comfortable with. This will give you more time to prepare for each corner and help you avoid sudden surprises. It's a lot of info to take in, so feel free to work your way up to this, changing the distance one click at a time until you're comfortable and can process the information properly. One final tip is to increase the co-driver volume individually, or decrease the other volume settings. This will make it easier to pick up on the specific details on the pace notes, and will be less overwhelming. So, you are now ready to tackle the stages, and hopefully this guide has given you a new appreciation for your poor passenger. Maybe they aren't so annoying after all. Maybe they are the key to your results. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Phil. And sorry for all the times I've fired unwarranted abuse in your direction. It really wasn't spot on. If you have found this guide useful, make sure you leave us a like and subscribe to the Traction channel for more rallying tips and tricks in the future. As always, thanks for watching, listen to me, Samir, and have a great day.